Am I truly the only one left? The only one who can save Illyria? <sighs> In an age long forgotten, the world of Illyria was a paradise. A bastion of civilization and unity, but human ambition and greed took over. What was once a haven turned into a battleground. The Cold War of ideologies spiraled out of control, resulting in a cataclysmic nuclear exchange. Illyria was scarred, forever changed. Skies darkened, radiant blue oceans turned murky as if the very soul of the world was tainted. The aftermath of the war led to rapid ecological decay. With the realization of the impending doom, survivors, with a melding of hope and desperation, turned to their advanced technology. The project, named Genesis Protocol, was initiated. They aimed to transfer their consciousness into a massive digital realm known as the Nexa Network, hoping to outlive the decay and one day return. Time flowed differently inside the Nexa Network. While the world outside rotted, the digital denizens of the Nexa experienced eons. But it was not a peaceful existence. Corruption, like a virulent disease, began to spread into the code. Strange, twisted digital entities emerged, spawning an eternal nightmare for the trapped souls. Eons passed until the Council was formed within the Nexa. Their sole aim was to put an end to the suffering and to find a way back to Illyria. From among them, you were chosen. As an architect, the sole role to return to the physical world, assess the damage, and find a solution. By entering this portal, you will be digitized into what remains Valyria to begin the arduous task of rebuilding. The world is counting on you, but you will not be alone. Your civilization within the Nexa will provide assistance where you need it most. Ugh. Oh, wow. That was, that was quite the transmat. Oh my goodness. Welcome, I'm Chosen Architect, and this is FTB Genesis. So does this need further instruction? My goodness, is this a epic looking build or what? Ah oh, man, but we are sucked into this new area, basically needing to reconstruct what civilization had ruined. And well, I think I am just the architect to do that. <laughs> and it should be perfect. I feel like they've chosen me well for the job. Now, this is a questing based mod pack and well, that means we should open up our quest book. And I think there's a lot to unravel here. Now, everything that you heard at the beginning is related to this main quest here. And well, we get started with Project Genesis. Um, so yes, there is a lot to unravel in Project Genesis. First, we need to unravel the mysteries of this mysterious little base. Now, the first thing we need to do is access the system internals. And I love that we can now do this. Click the getting started quest line. And now we get direct access to this. Oh man, the cold sterile environment of the seed vault welcomes you. So that's what this is, the seed vault. Finally, the faint lights blink on consoles and an AI voice guides you. Welcome back, architect. Alaria waits your direction. Hmm. And so the first thing we need to do is find the terminal and log in. So data access, I think is the first place we should do that. And I noticed some ME systems up here. And so we should access this, right? Or not. Huh. So calamity. Oh man, ouch. The system overloaded and the machines exploded. I had better note this in my journal. So our system exploded and we're left deserted. I hope it elaborates. I hope it elaborates. But we do get a bottle, which is something we're gonna need to worry about here soon. But calamity, you let the smoke out. <laughs> oh goodness. As you approach the main digital storage, alarms blare. A pulsating energy radiates from it. Growing unstable, the AI voice turns frantic. Containment breach imminent. With no time to act, the storage explodes, sending shockwaves that disable the vault's energy grid. Energy from the smoke and debris, it becomes clear that the resources inside the sea vault won't be enough 
The world outside, while inhospitable, holds the key to gathering essential resources. You should be safe within the radius of the vault, but beyond that, you'll need protection. Although much time has passed, the world is still plagued by radiation and easily disturbed protective layers of its soil can be churned by your mere presence. It is essential to devise protection in the form of a radiation suit before you'll be able to go beyond the vault's border. That is probably some good information. And well, boom. And uh, now we move on to the you're not safe, or are we? There is a powerful electromagnetic field that extends from the heart of the facility. It will prevent most hostile enemies from appearing inside, but this is not a foolproof defense. There are smart creatures in the world, and some have even evolved to use tools. Weaker blocks can be dug through, so be sure to fortify your defenses with mundane materials until you can eventually extend protective shields. Your simulation chamber is not protected as the field interferes with normal operations inside. I think the key note here though is simulation chamber, which we'll get into in a minute. Now, although it is quite dangerous to leave the safety of the vault, you should be able to safely venture as far as where the nature preserve field extends. You should be able to gather basic materials throughout this region in relative safety. You can also break down those excess beehives into planks with simple shape crafts. And we need to make a crafting table. And it says we can use beehives. So let's do our first task, which is going to be finding beehives. And it looks like there are beehives over here. And it says we can stay inside of the field um, that I'm assuming is the nice luscious green area. That is going to be kind of a challenge. So let's go ahead and make some planks. It looks like we can craft this. And first things first, we can craft ourselves a crafting table. And well, the quest goes on further, but I'm going to say a crafting table just doesn't craft it. Let's go ahead and make ourselves a crafting table on a stick because I think this is going to be a much better friend to us. Now, what else does it say? It looks like we're getting a little low on water and it mentions water. And then we need to find a supplementary jar. In addition to your hunger, you will need to manage your thirst. While in the vault, this should be fine as we have provided an endless source of fresh water to you. Locate the faucet and jar in the back of the agricultural wing. Here, you can refill glass bottles with fresh water to take with you. Make sure to bring enough if you venture outside. And it shows us <laughs> something very familiar, which I absolutely love this. And it is one of my favorite items, a faucet. And I think this is the agricultural wing as we uh, read the sign on the way in here. And interesting, we have some garden cloches set up and this is our jar. <laughs> I love this. Um, and we should be able to turn it on and it should fill up just like that. Turn it off and on. But to get a bottle, I assume we need to drink this. Yes. So we get our first bottle and this is going to give us some water. And what better thing to do than to just drink away? Let's consume all of the water. And there's a reason for this. I want my bottles to be able to stack. But yes, now we have water. And uh, so... This is going to be another thing we have to keep up with along with food. And so now that we have all of our water bottles, we should be good. But I want to do one more thing. And that is I want to bring the water source with me. And I should be able to simply break the actual jar. And I want to keep this with me. Um, and it's going to provide me with a accessible way of getting more water. Uh, and I think that is going to be great. And we can come back here to refill it at any time. We can turn the faucet on, faucet on and off. But uh, yeah, this will be a nice way to keep the water with us as we're going to be traveling and walking a lot. The next thing it wants us to do is to break some stuff. It says break tree, smash rock. It will definitely break quickly, but it sure is more effective than punching stone. Uh, the basic wood tools will get you started quickly upgrade to stone. So we do need to upgrade to stone, which means we need to go out and we need to find some cobblestone and craft a pick and also craft a new table so we can get ourselves a workbench that'll hold items and we'll get a set of items here. And to find stone, we have to venture outside, but I can tell you it already looks sort of dreary out. And 
there is a way that we can make it day. Notice all of this wool. I think I should be able to utilize some of the resources here that is laying about and make myself a bed. Let's go ahead and do that. So perfect. With all of these resources, I can now craft a way to make it daytime, which is going to be very handy as we get started. See you in the morning. Oh, the sunrise is beautiful. Ah, oh, every morning it is going to shine through the vault doors. Now I am on a mission to find stone and I've been told that this region is relatively safe. And I'm going to take its word, the AI system that's been reading to me. I do hear mobs, but I'm going to go ahead. And I think we're safe-ish. They are, I think, under us. But all we're, all we're going to need is a few pieces of cobblestone in order to get started. This place is insane looking, and I absolutely love it. Oh, that was... That was sort of startling. Um, there's apparently rocket something. I don't know. They're shooting rockets. So to craft the pickaxe, let's go ahead and get started with this. We need a pickaxe and then we're also going to need a new crafting table. And then we should be able to submit all of these. Now, this whole pack is heavily quest based. So we are going to need to focus on the quests to progress. It is super important, such as this quest right here telling me to make a furnace. Yes, we will need a furnace. And as soon as we make one, it's going to open the quest, giving us some coal blocks, some charcoal blocks. And then the next step is to get charcoal in which we can just turn the charcoal into coal, charcoal. Yeah, and then we get four charcoal blocks. So we get a lot of stuff to sort of start with and everything leads us to this point where now it says time to get agrarian. Now, in order to obtain some rubber, you're going to need to cultivate stick resin. You can utilize what's already in the vault to get it. Start by creating some crop sticks to plant on and then go find some seeds. You head over to the agriculture sector of the vault, you should find some wheat seeds that will work with getting us started. Continue on the sprouting life uh, quest chapter, okay? Um, so it's wanting me to make some sticks and we need to make some crops. I already have a wheat seed, so I should be fine. But there should be barrels that contain some seeds as well. And according to the quest, we need to figure out a place to plant these. And we were given a hose, so we should be fine. And I do know where technically some water is at. Um, there is water over here and also water outside. So maybe we can try to plant this in some dirt outside, maybe? Now, if you're crafting these items, we do get an overgrowth fertilizer, but I definitely suggest holding onto this for later as it will make a world of a difference once you have this set up and save that. Now, under the accessing systems, we've completed this and it tells us to go into the sprouting new life section where we're gonna get started with agricultural stuff. And this is going to be a big part. We need to make some dirt and it says most of the earth has been devastated by radiation. You'll need to find some water within the protected zone to rehydrate some soil. Look out front and listen for the sound of flowing water. And um, so we need to find some dried salt blocks and we need to convert it into dirt. And to do that, we just need to head on over here, grab some dried salt and try not to go too far out. But there is dried salt all out here and we should be relatively safe staying within this green zone. And we need to turn this into dirt. And to do that, we place it in water and I guess to rehydrate it. And we just right click the water. And so clicking in the water should work. I think, yeah, clicking into the water works just like this. Perfect, so now we have a little bit of dirt and we should be able to get started, hopefully with some crops. But let's go ahead and place down some of our dirt and let's see if we can't grow some seeds. Oh, seems the environment is still too harsh to support viable farmland. I should check my journals for more information. So maybe I can craft up the farmland instead and place it down? Oh, ground zero farming. Now, if the farmland can be placed, could we maybe try to grow on it while it's here? Let's see. Let's see if we can place our seeds. And it says this can't grow here. It needs more light to grow. 
And it says it seems the environment outside is still too harsh to support plant life. Should check my journals for more information. So if we check our journals, we will find out that there's some problems. Now under the emergency repairs, it says terrible discovery. It seems the environment is still too harsh to support life. This is dire news indeed. We're going to have to attempt to bootstrap your agricultural expansion utilizing the simulation matrix. And that sounds really cool. Using the simulation matrix, you can materialize pre-encoded biome slivers we designed before the fall. The only problem is the overload has rendered the quantum bridge to the Nexa inoperable. Oh man. So we're gonna need to head on over to the emergency repairs chapter to initiate repairs. Okay, so now that we know we can't grow crops, we now have to find another way. And so on to the emergency repairs, which is right down here. And this is going to lead us to this. Don't panic, there is a contingency plan in place for the event of a catastrophic outage uh, like the one you're experiencing. Beneath the task screen input in the data access uh, section, you will find a metal barrel that contains a small fossil fuel energy power generation system. Ooh, that's a mouthful. And it won't sustain anything long term, but it should be enough to reestablish the link. So we need to find yourself a coal generator in the data section of this base. That is going to be interesting. And now we know we can't grow crops outside of the simulation chamber. Well, at least some crops, as I believe saplings will work. Now on to the data access area. And this place is so cool with all of its like biosphere areas. Um, but apparently underneath this task screen, there is going to be a barrel and there is a barrel. They were not lying to us, whoever these people are. And we do need to toss something because my inventory is rather full. So let's toss those hemp seeds. We won't need those for a while, but we do need our wire. Now, what it's wanting me to do is reestablish a connection to the task screen. And now that we have this, we're gonna get a few items. We'll save those for later. Um, but let's go ahead and grab the item that we actually need, which is going to be our generator. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and place myself a cable right here. And then the, ta the, uh, the cold generator is going to attach to the back of that which is where it is at. Now, this is interesting and it talks about it a little bit in the quest, but this is going to generate a very particular type of power. If I put the coal in here, it's going to generate um, this amperage, um, this uh, current power, what it, it, it talks about it inside of the quest book. Um, but thankfully our cables and everything in the task screen can accept this. So if we go ahead and we use an LV connector, we can connect this point to this point and then we can go ahead and use our wires to connect these two together. And so now we have wires connected to the task screen. Now you can't exactly get away with attaching the wire, the insulated uh, tin wires to this as it sends the power weird in packets. So it's recommended for any of the task screen operations to use LV connectors or connectors from this mod in order to send it here, which is immersive engineering. Now on to the task, it says don't panic. And we've already completed that. It says initiate the reboot. Yeah, electrodynamic energy uses a system of wattage and voltage similar to how uh, electricity works. Um, it says we can also convert this from energy into many other forms of power, such as FE, IC2, and EU, which is going to be great. It says to get down to the fundamentals while reestablishing the link, you should build a small power system, which is what we've just done. Um, so we've got it all connected and now on the task screen itself, which we don't have permission to use yet, we're going to have to break the screen in order to get permission to use it. Um, so now that we've broken it and placed it back down, we can then choose our task, initiate reboot, and then we're going to accept that and bam, we're going to connect our cables back and we should be able to establish a connection. And look at that, we're starting to generate power. And uh, we need to get this power all the way filled before. And also, try not to touch <laughs> the power cables so you don't get shocked. Oh yeah, and uh, this is the part of the video where I ask you guys to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, as we initiate our reboot. Perfect, we've initiated the reboot. And so this is going to allow us to move to our next session. 
Now that the system has been rebooted, we can start providing you with more direct assistance. Oh, thank goodness. All I need is assistance. Head on over to the synthetic acquisitions chapter, uh, which will allow you to submit power onto the system to create material goods to assist you in your endeavors. Oh, nice. So this is going to provide us with some powered goods, right? It's kind of interesting, but this right here, this whole section, once we've done some certain tasks, we can get some certain items. For example, if we send the task screen power from this area, will gr grant us a repeatable quest where we can get sand. Um, and same goes for a lot of these different items, including a uh, an Amadrone tablet, which we can trade items with, but we can get one by simply doing power. And all of these different things can be obtained. We can get recharges on things by simply using this block with the task screen. I think that's kind of cool. Now, for now, I'm going to pull this out and let's also start working on the next section now that we've initiated reboot. Our whole goal was to get our simulation room ready so we can start planting things. And it says we will need to uh, we will need to provide you with an environment with a better climate controls so that you can grow some of the seeds in the vault. This will be your first time initiating the simulation matrix. And it may be overwhelming, but we'll guide you through the process. And it says the first thing we need to do is head on over to the simulation chamber. It says, um, and it's, uh, we basically just need to send this power, right? Um, so the task is going to be the 100K FE. So by the time that, that we get over there, the 100K FE should be generated. Let's go ahead and make sure there's like two or three in there to generate that. And we need to head on over to the simulation side of this area. Right there, simulation. So I've not been over here yet. So this is gonna be kind of interesting. Let's see what we have. Connectivity Nexus, that's interesting. Simulation Matrix. Okay, that's cool. And there's some doors. Whoa, that is trippy. <laughs> We're just, the room is just getting smaller. Wow. That is kind of cool. Okay, so we need to get this up and running. So I think our task has completed. And for now, I'm going to store some things inside of my simulation storage chest. <laughs> but there we go. So now we have the simulated reality set up. And it says uh, now that we have this all provided, we need to make sure that this room is clear and there's nothing in there. And we need to click the activate simulation and also grab our sphatical or our sphatical storage cell. Let's go ahead and activate this and grab our cell. And we'll notice there's something in here. <laughs> this is so cool. And I am so excited for this. Finally, something that utilizes this. So now that we've materialized the simulation, you will need to encode it into a sphatical disk we've provided for you. Once encoded, you will be able to load the simulation again and unload it as often as you need. To save the simulation to the disk, insert the Fatical disk into the Fatical IO port by the simulation matrix. Once inserted, apply a redstone signal by pressing the glowing button. Very cool. So um, it says note, you can name the drives with an anvil to keep track of them better, which is something we're definitely gonna do. And then it says head over to the rehabilitation uh, chapter to continue working towards your new farmland. So we need to put this inside of here, this sphatical, and this will allow us, you'll notice there's stuff in here. You'll notice if we push this button, it is now gone. <laughs> there's nothing but floating leaves because it's now being stored inside of this cell. So everything that was in there is now in this cell. And we can call this croptopia. Croptopia, there we go. So now we have our Croptopia, and if we want to reload this, we put it in there and click the button again. And now we have access to a place that we can grow things. Oh my goodness, this place is beautiful. Oh, and there's food. Look at all of that wheat. Now this building inside of here looks so cool. So we have a nice little storage hut and I can just store all of my goods in here. And it seems like there's some, there's some seeds. There's a nature's blessing book in here. So you can put this on a hoe and it acts as bone mill. That's going to be super useful for potentially growing trees. 
Very, very cool. There's also some kelp over here. All kinds of goodies thrown about. So, yes, I'm going to grab all of my stuff that I left inside of that storage box, and I want to put it inside of this little place that I'm going to call home for now. Now that I have access to this place, oh boy, are things going to change. We now have the ability to start growing our crops, and this is going to lead us into something new. So we're going to grab our crop analyzer, and this is going to be very handy, and same with that sugar cane. Um, I can also take all of my other stuff since I sorted my things. And this leads us into the selective breeding tab. And this is where things are going to get kind of sporadic. Everything kind of separates from this point. But in reality, we're going to learn how to use the crop analyzer real quick. And we're also going to learn how to breed crops. Um, and this is going to be something that I want to set up right away uh, because it does take a little bit of time. Now, inside the crop analyzer, there's a couple of things that you need to know. And that is how to change its modes. And these quests go over all of those different things. Um, but as of right now, you can put a seed, for example, a seed bag in here, and it will read what that seed bag is. Um, but you can also shift right click on a crop and it will tell you a little bit of information. And then having this in my hands, it will allow you to see information about your crop. This is pretty advanced. It gets kind of advanced, but for right now, all we need to really worry about is we're going to place seeds into crop sticks and how we can breed things. Now, accessing this, you can see that there's a couple of different ways that we can change our menu. Hitting M is one way, but we're probably going to need to change that hotkey because by default, well, that opens up our map. So let's go ahead and change the hotkeys for the crop analyzer. Now, this is going to be handled in your keybinds underneath the crop, uh, underneath the IC2 keybinds. And I'm just going to set this to my uh, colon key. I think that'll work for now. And what I can do now is hold down the colon key. And when I right click, it's going to change the mode of my analyzer. And now I can see what individual crops can end up breeding to make. And this is going to be super important. So having access to this is uh, the reason why I went over all of that. Because if we take a look at sugarcane, um, we'll be able to see that if we breed up sugarcane, we can generate this stuff called stick read, which is going to be the main thing that we need to get to be able to progress and start adventuring. And so in that regard, we now have our crop sticks. Let's talk about how to breed. So there's a couple of different ways that you can breed up and duplicate seeds with this mod. And if you remember uh, from the past, which is kind of what this IC2 is all about, you might know some of this stuff. But for right now, we can place down crops like this. And so we have a row. Um, and then we can place down sugarcane like this. And then when they're fully grown, they have a chance whenever there's crop sticks that are doubled in between, they have a chance of mutating and causing something different to grow here by breeding. Um, you can also breed crops by placing sticks like this and this middle piece. And this is why you have four inside of the crop analyzer is because you can technically have four different crops at once that is ultimately going to breed something and your chances do change. If you want to duplicate a seed, well, that's where this comes into play. You place your seed in the middle and you double crop sticks on the outside, like so, and whatever's in the middle will go to the outside and should duplicate your seeds. Um, and there's also a tier progression, so if you're familiar to the whole tin tin tinning of things like chickens and, uh, and other crops, that's exactly what this does. As you've seen right here, we have a 555, and you can definitely get your crops up to higher. I think it goes up to 25 by 25 by 25. So yes, there's a lot of potential, but at first, the best way I think to get this going is by setting up rows and several rows of this to be able to get your first, uh, yeah, stick, stick weed, right? Right. <laughs> stick read. Um, so yes, stick reads are going to be important. You can also use fertilizer to speed these up. So you can click seeds on here to increase the crop growth. All of this is incredibly important and is one of the first things you want to do is get as much of this place down as possible because you're going to want a higher chance of getting that first thing, which is going to get you sticky resin. 
this is how we're going to progress to be able to uh, kind of venture further. So by next episode, I should hopefully have some crossbreeding happening. And uh, as this is going to take a bit of time, but you can already see that this right here has grown. It's not its full stage, but we can already harvest it and we can start to now plant more of this. And we want to let it stay full grown and then we'll just manage what's in the middle that generates once it's all fully grown. Now, this is only the start of our series as there's gonna be a lot more happening soon. We're gonna be able to adventure hopefully by next episode and get all suited up to be able to expand and to be able to gather new resources out in the radiated land. I'm super excited. So if you guys are just as excited, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And of course, give this video a huge thumbs up. Now, I do wanna thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to Adamium. I hope I said that right. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible. I thank you guys so, so very much. And if you're interested in joining the Discord, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and join the amazing crew today of over 30,000 members and growing from members just like you. Guys, I do appreciate you watching and I hope to see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.